Chinese startup Writer is aiming to fix one of the big problems facing generative intel artificial intelligence, the massive cost of training models. Its solution? Synthetic data, or data created by AI. That's allowed the company to train its latest model, released this week, for about $700,000. Now, that compares to millions of dollars for competitors like ChatGPT. The company is currently raising funds at a nearly $2 billion valuation and counts Uber, Salesforce, and Vanguard among its corporate customers. So joining us now for more in an exclusive interview is writer, co-founder, and CEO May Habib. May, it's great to have you on the show. Welcome. Thank you, Morgan. Hello. So I just before we get into the cost of, of uh, the synthetic data and the cost of training language models, I want to take a step back and just sort of what what does writer offer into the enterprise market where Gen AI is concerned? How does it stack up against some of the other competitors that we do talk about day in, day out, like OpenAI? Well, the word is stack. You said it. Companies are struggling to adopt generative AI at scale. And what we do, we call a full stack approach to generative AI. So it's the large language models plus the critical tools that companies need to customize those models for their data, for their workflows. Okay. So when we talk about synthet synthetic data, uh, what does that mean? How are you able to do this at such a lower price tag than your competitors? So first of all, our incentive is to create high performance models that enterprise customers can run in their own environment. So we are heavily incentivized to do this at a lower cost so that customers who are not GPU rich like us, right, are able to do some pretty powerful things. And our approach to synthetic data, we've been working on for years. Um, we have trained a separate LLM that can take real factual data, uh, data that looks like the types of use cases that we address and convert it to data that is synthetic, that is structured for the clean and clear um, uh, uh, training by the model. You just used the term GPU rich. I haven't heard that before, but it raises two questions for me. The first is, do you want to be GPU rich? Is this a workaround until you actually get to get your hands on some of those chips? Or does this provide a completely different model in general, different pathway forward with these types of Gen AI capabilities? Great question. It's definitely the latter. We think larger data sets are hitting their ceiling and the future belongs to this more precision training approach and the architecture uh, innovation on the transformer itself. So we talk about synthetic data. I mean, there, there's risks that seem to be associated with it. Uh, concerns about echo chambers, concerns about hallucinations. Uh, what do you say to those to those concerns? If you were creating gobbledygook um, synthetic data, then I would agree with you. But our approach is really different, and I think we're going to see a lot more companies adopt um, an approach where you're looking at real factual data, but rather than using data that you know, is meant for humans, you're building data that is meant for AI and meant to be training data. So Jensen Huang from NVIDIA came on the show last week with Julie Sweet from Accenture. They're striking a deal together to basically bridge the gap between NVIDIA's stack and enterprise AI. They think this is something that's going to happen and then simultaneously industrial AI too over these next couple of years. You actually work with Accenture. How do you see these chapters playing out, especially when we are talking about this application layer and Accenture is one of your clients and she talked a lot about software needing to be rewired. Yeah, absolutely. It is a complete rewrite of software and both NVIDIA and Accenture are customers actually and partners. Um, so this is an ecosystem that we know very well and there is just so much work to do for the last mile for these enterprises. And, you know, we love and respect um, both companies very much. And these are all going to be massive, massive um, opportunities to help the enterprise build and scale and really get their people to adopt.